Steering is our honor to welcome you to the King Major Podcast. All right, well, we are live. No, we're not. We're recording with everybody's favorite snarky, shadowy, super dev, Alu from the Llama Air Force. Welcome to the Kingmaker podcast and our first interview episode. Good evening, good morning, good wherever you are. America, I think, somewhere. That's good morning for you, Y'all, right? yeah, y- y'all, y'all might know where we're <laughs> from. Morning. So, welcome to the show. Um, looking so forward to uh, getting to know you a little bit more on this episode and uh, hearing all the things you have to say and and maybe learning a few things for the community. But uh, Alejandro, hello as well. I'll I'll let you kick things off. Hey, what's up? Um, I was just letting you talk. Um, But yeah, it's really nice to talk to you for the first time, like voice to voice. I know we DM'd each other a bit or we talked a bit in the Convex Discord, but this is the first time I actually had the opportunity to actually hear your voice actually hear your voice and talk for a bit so alejandro let's just go straight into um sort of the meat of the topic that uh i I think would be most interesting which is you know all these questions all the time people are putting up in the discord same questions um but i I think there's some things people can learn or learn from you alu on how to do their own research, maybe some ideas on, you know, stack size versus what they do, um, maybe some better understandings, uh, as we were talking uh, prior to recording, just about making sure they know the basics that's available to them. So let's start with this. Uh, how, how do you do your own research? And if you would, um, you know, what would you say to the normies out there that can't read code? How, how can they dig into things to make sure that they're not going to find themselves in the wrong protocol, in the wrong situation, um, and ultimately rugged? I think the lesson to be learned here is that it's basically inevitable uh, because part of doing research is trying out different things, uh, just tr- putting your money at risk. And yeah, there's a risk that you are getting rugged. But the best way for me to learn uh, how stuff works is to read uh, 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 multiple articles, uh, read multiple Twitter threads, read multiple Discord uh, servers, uh, try and see what the different point of views are of different people. So you don't get this uh, single idea of somebody like me or somebody else, but you're trying to get an overview of every uh, possible angle on a certain uh, coin or protocol. Uh, and you just dive into it, you just start using it. Uh, and as you use it, you actually start to question, uh, you start to come up with questions and you're trying to answer them. So in the case of uh, Convex, for example, uh, when I first heard of it, I had no idea. Well, I had a basic idea of what it was doing, it was like Boosties as a service. Um, so the first thing I did was I took some of my LP tokens I had on Curve. I was sticking some uh, ETH, uh, ETH uh, SE, ETH SE ETH, uh, the synthetic uh, po- token, uh, token pool and I just put them in convex and uh, and that was basically it that was basically it there was nothing else to do so then you start at least I do I start asking questions like okay so, so what is it actually doing uh, where is the yield coming from uh, how sustainable is that yield can I can I just fire and forget about it uh, how does it work so you just start asking questions is this in discord you you don't immediately start asking questions you just read what everybody else is typing so everybody has their bags, everybody has their bias, you have to keep that in mind, so everything is colored. Um, but as you gather these multiple point of views, you start to uh, see what the underlying ideas are, uh, how everything is uh, tied together, and you start to form your own opinion. And uh, I think to answer your question, uh, how do you do your research, is that you have to do multiple things at once uh, for a long amount of time there's no single answer there's no single point of truth Uh, there's no single document that you can read or a single video that you can watch uh, and be fully educated it's an ongoing process and you keep on learning every day and uh, even if you do know about code 
uh, I don't think anybody ever reads uh, the code, uh, for example, like the convex code. Uh, Benny and I have been um, uh, looking at the code for the first time a couple of months ago, but the protocol by then had multiple billions in uh, TVL already. People just use it, people just ape, people don't read code. And it's at this point, the DeFi legos are so complicated. They are so intertwined. Even if you do have the ability to read the code, you're not going to see everything. You're not going to see every rock. Uh, I think like 30 minutes ago or one hour ago, there was a new Open Zeppelin uh, audit report about a convex, uh, potential convex exploit. Uh, and that's an exploit that nobody found uh, even after multiple audits. So there's always the risk that somebody is, uh, that there's an exploit and that you can get rocked. So uh, with that in mind, if you don't want to get rocked, always keep a cold, uh, cold position, a safe position, like just hold raw ETH. So that in the, in the case that something goes wrong, you always have the uh, fallback to your safe, uh, to your safe stash. That's good advice. Uh, one follow up and then I'll, I'll kick it over to Alejandro, but uh, any sources that you recommend on doing your own research, any YouTube folks or any podcasts, anything you would uh, recommend for people to, to gain some knowledge? Uh, my personal preference is always to just go to YouTube and try to find some good DeFi tutorials. They, these are usually low level. Uh, these are uh, easy to comprehend. These are easily digestible. Uh, a couple of good YouTubers are Justin Bram. I think uh, a lot of people might already know him. He has uh, good content straight to the point, shows you how everything works, uh, including the Convex Wars, uh, Lama Air Force, but also other protocols like Tokamak, for example. Um, there's, uh, I think there's some old school YouTube tutorials about DeFi Dad, and that's how to get into DeFi uh, in general. But I think they are a little bit outdated because they are uh, more than a year old. You know, everything, uh, everything older than a couple of months is already outdated in DeFi. Um, there's a couple of um, uh, Twitter users like uh, the Crypto Column. He has a funny name, but he usually tweets out uh, interesting things about upcoming protocols like Silo, uh, Convex, Tokamak. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know. What else is there? There's, there's the Convex Discord servers. There's the Vodium Discord server. There's, the, uh, there's a couple of other Discord servers. You just got to join everything that you can. Uh, try to digest as much as, you, as much as possible. And if you think, if you're just wasting your time, if you join the Discord server of your or if you've stumbled upon a YouTube uh, server uh, channel and after an hour you think there's nothing of value here, just feel free to leave because there's because there's plenty of other channels. There's this constant search for resources and it's it's never ending. So you're constantly on the lookout for better resources. Yeah, thank you for that advice. Alejandro? Yeah, so you were saying that with that there's a lot of resources and people to follow and you're exactly right. It can actually be a little bit too uh, overwhelming sometimes because there's always something to learn um, in DeFi. And like you said, things go so fast and things can happen so suddenly that you, no one can really be prepared for. So with that being said, um, what it's it could be a little bit hard for people because like you said, everyone has a bias. You go on the Convex Discord, Vodium Discord, and everyone has a bias, of course, with their own bags, but the strategy, even their DeFi strategy that they follow, and like with one, what one person would do with 10K, what another person would do with 10K is like, a, like really different, if you understand what I mean. So how would you recommend someone with all these biases and all these different strategies that people do and that they may learn from and all these different tokens that people shill or people support um, to determine what would they want to do with their bag, uh, what's the best best way to play the fly, flywheel of DeFi? I think the best way to, sense. Um, like I said, the best way to join is to just do it, but do it in a way that you can still, that you can still sleep at night. So um, when you're first introduced to, to, to Convex and Curve, I think the basic thing, uh, the most easiest part of it all is just uh, is to understand the curve token. So, hey, you have $10,000, why don't I just buy the curve tokens? And then you start to question yourself, okay, so what can I actually do with it? What can I do with these curve tokens? And then in this uh, example, you can think, uh, well, there's not much you can do with curve token itself. 
So you start doing research about VE curve and uh, the tokenomics and the re and the revenue streams and the governance, and then you can and then you come across oh hey, I can actually stake it into convex so that becomes convex curve and it earns me yield. So the next uh, possible step is to take that vanilla curve and just turn it into convex curve and stake it on the platform. Uh, so that's so you're trying to drill a little bit deeper and then the next question is oh but there's also a governance uh, token of the platform that i'm using which is cvx how does that work um what's it all about does it does it have a revenue stream can i earn yield on it is there any governance on it and then you learn about the bribes uh oh there's a bribe revenue stream so how, how can i get that yield oh i gotta lock it how does that work oh i gotta lock it for 16 weeks or longer and uh i gotta I, I got to vote on certain things. What am I voting for? What has happened? Why are people paying me money? So uh, with every step you take, you just dive deeper and deeper into it. And you try to stay engaged. And you try to stay engaged. Uh, you, try <laughs> you try to stay engaged and you learn as you go. And if you are uncomfortable, if you think I'm holding a token that uh, I cannot sleep at at night, it makes me... Uh, uncomfortable then it's okay to take a step back and to, to just exit that position yeah you might miss out on a 10x you might miss out on a 100x but you might possibly also miss out on a rug you know, on a rug pull um, I think that um, everybody's focused on the short term everybody want to make everybody wants to make a lot of money right now uh, but the people that who make money the people that survive are those that can um, stay in it long enough uh, to not get liquidated so if you are comfortable with a certain position and you can hold it in a downturn and you can keep being motivated to do the research and you can just hold it, eventually, if it's not if it's a shit token, you will leave your position. And if it's not a shit token, and if you actually believe in what you have, you, go, you will probably just keep uh, holding it or you maybe end up buying more. So I saw your name in, in your Discord um, ID in some of the Alchemix servers. Um, I, I think you'd written some stuff up in the past. Can you talk a little bit about that and then maybe why you've also found yourself here in the, uh, the convex curve llama air force ecosystem now? Yeah. So I was active in the Alchemix uh, community in the Alchemix discord. It's a very, a very good product. I think that, uh, once they get their V2 out, uh, completely with custom strategies and high APRs, so they're going to have a banger of a product. But they are still in development, so uh, of course, uh, as anything with DeFi, uh, anything can happen. Um, so uh, what got me into uh, what got me into Curve uh, was first that uh, I had normal Ethereum, I had ETH tokens, um, and everybody was making yield on it. There was uh, in 2017, 2018, I think it was more like 2018 and later, 2020 even for me, everybody was yield farming. Which means uh, these are, there were, there were uh, ETH pools, so you had the pool twos, uh, which consist of Ethereum and another token. But I did not trust these other tokens. I was very risk averse. I didn't want to do. I want to deal. I didn't want to deal with any of it. So um, I just want to keep Ethereum, but I also wanted to make yield. I didn't want it. I didn't want to hold an unproductive asset. So that uh, one way or another led me to Curve because there was the Curve uh, Ethereum, uh, S-Ethereum pool, the synthetic Ethereum pool uh, back in 2020, which uh, gave me the opportunity to earn yield uh, without having to um, uh, expose myself to impermanent loss. So that's how I got into Curve uh, myself personally. It allowed me to, yield, to earn yield while staying fully in Ethereum. And I also got in Alchemix because uh, the idea of a self-repaying loan is a very interesting uh, idea. And it, I think it's, um, I don't think there is a uh, kind of, there is a uh, variant of it in traditional finance. And uh, I always had the idea, and by always I mean like one year ago, because Alchemix itself is only one year ago, is that uh, you could potentially use it as a savings account. So if you have $100,000, you could put it on Alchemix. And then you can take a loan for your groceries. Like every week you can take a $100 loan, pay your groceries with it. And at the end of the next week, it would have paid itself off. So you could basically live off the rent, live off the interest of your savings. Uh, and one important piece, uh, the puzzle that is Alchemix is that they, there is the, uh, they have a lot of synthetics. They have LUSD, they have LETH. Uh, I think in the future they will have LBTC as well. 
uh, and they uh, uh, have to offer a trading pool between LUSD and normal USD and LETH and normal ETH. So naturally, if you want to have uh, pools for likewise uh, coins, you're going to end up with Curve. So in the interest of Alchemist, they want to have a lot of CVX because if they have a lot of CVX, that's one of my first proposals to them, is that they could incentivize liquidity for their Alchemix pools, which is a requirement to have uh, to let people uh, swap their minted synthetic tokens into real tokens that they could use in real life. Uh, so if they could incentivize, uh, if they had, if they would buy CVX, they could incentivize their pools so that they have deep liquidity, and that's good for the protocol. And I wanted to have, uh, and I wanted to help Alchemix basically. Uh, so that's how I got into Alchemix. Uh, and convex uh, at the same time um, and what made me uh, even more interested in in convex uh, is the fact that curve is a very good protocol but the ve tokenomics uh, when i first read into it i wanted to uh, i wanted to use the boost like i said uh, when you start using things you start to ask questions how does it work how can i make even more money uh, so the VE tokenomics have this thing called boosties, uh, where you can boot, where you can uh, lock your CVR, CRV tokens for VE CRV. Uh, you could use some of the power for boost, and you can earn more yield that way. Um, but in my case, I'm not a whale, so it wasn't very interesting because you need a lot of gas, you need a very big position uh, for it to become worthwhile. And what Convex allows is that it gives you the opportunity for to receive more yield using these boosts without having to be a whale. So uh, previously what was only available to whales and big time users was now available to everybody including me so I started to look into uh, what is it, what is it actually doing how is it achieving uh, yields for everybody instead of just whales uh, and then from there on the ball just kept on rolling so d did you get in towards the beginning of convex then uh, are you uh, in with tetranode at two dollars uh, I was in before um, um, before Tetra got in, uh, I was there like one week after the, after, after the launch of uh, Convex itself. Uh, I did not participate in any uh, pre-sale token or whatever. I don't think they even had one. Uh, they, don't, they, they had a very, very limited amount of uh, C, C tokens for the CRC. These acronyms are really horrible. For the CRV, CVX CRV token. Uh, LP, I mean, uh, liquidity pool. Uh, so I got in two weeks after the launch. Uh, I think I bought somewhere around six dollars. It went up to twenty dollars. That was like the first month of the launch, and it went from twenty dollars back to two dollars. Uh, everything came crashing down. That was before there was any kind of voting. Um, and I sold somewhere at ten dollars, and I bought back at two dollars. I think at the same time, like Tetranode. Two dollars to to. Two dollar fifty or something. Well done, well done. No, I'm just, I'm just wanted to say impressed. I got in a lot later, personally myself. Um, I, rem I think if I remember correctly, there's a YouTuber called Three 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 Crypto. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, um, but I remember him being on my recommended page, and I just saw Convex all over the thumbnail. I'm like, huh, what's that? I searched it up, and that's how I got in, and. Obviously, like a true DJ, and I bought I bought it without even looking at what it is, um, just because I just to force myself to look into it, because you know if I don't if I don't use a product, then I'm not gonna bother to learn how it works and everything. So that's a little bit a little bit how that is the same as with, uh, with with a lot of tokens that I have, including Spell. Uh, I was there during the. Uh, uh, one spell was like uh, not even a cent. Uh, I bought a couple of spell just to force myself to do some research. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I did not believe in a token. Uh, I bought the token, so I forced myself to do research. I did not like the token for various reasons. I did not like the emission schedule. I thought it was just going to be a farm and dump. So I just sold it. I did my research and then it moved to like, what was it? 60 cents? No, not even. 6 cents or something. As a factor of 10, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up here, but yeah, even if you do your research and even if you are early, you can still screw up. I think that's, I think that's one of the 
the that's one of the things everyone is going to have to learn in DeFi eventually is how to adapt to situations as, as they come as they come up, and that's why it's, that's why it's so important to keep up to date with the, what's going on in the space. Yeah, but it is good good advice to ape first and read later. Uh, I think that's the that's what I do with almost every token now, just to force myself into that research. Yeah, I might lose a little bit of money, but yeah, it's worth a risk, right? That's what I generally recommend my current normie friends that that are trying to get into crypto. I generally just say the same advice. Just ape, ape in now. Start with the basics if you want, but ape in now and just learn about it later. I think um, when Frex was first interested in getting a partnership with Convex, I think that was like in October last year, uh, I did not understand Frex at all. I knew it was a it was a stable coin uh, that is not uh, uh that it, that is not like maker or uh, liquidity, um, but I knew that they were they were interested in convex and they were playing uh, they were very interested uh, and they were playing the bribe game very uh, smart. Uh, Sam kept impressing me with uh, a lot of smart moves, so I just bought the FXS token, and to this day I still do not one hundred percent one hundred percent fully comprehend it how it works, but it has paid off um, and. Just by looking at the ecosystem, what are people saying? Uh, how is the developer acting? Is he being? Uh, does he have a? Does he have a big ego? Is he trying to uh, inflate his ego? Is he trying to make himself popular or not? Or is he trying to cooperate with other protocols? So, if you want to make, if you want to be successful, you don't even have to fully understand it, but you just have to get a good feel of it. But of course, as always, it could also backfire. So. Take us a, a little bit more uh, behind the scenes on Llama Air Force. Uh, I think that's the next topic I, I'd really like to know about. Uh, you and Benny, the uh, the pilots, uh, how how that start? It, you know, talking to you a little bit for a while here. It sounds like maybe you and Benny have worked on a few things together over the years, but uh, mm, no, no, okay, no, no. we don't. We know each other from the Convex Discord for like. Uh, I think it's like half a year right now, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, I've lost sense of uh, time recently. Um, it started out with, I think when the bribes just, uh, with the voting, uh, not even the bribes, but just the voting uh, started uh, to be rolled out for Convex. I think it was uh, Firebrand on the Discord, which is uh, CryptoConum. He made this little flyer, uh, this little graphic in Photoshop or in, uh, whatever editing tool he uses to make his flyers um, and he wanted to shill it out on Twitter and I was like these numbers these are very cool but they're not very accurate because uh, the prices were fluctuating very badly uh, badly as in everything was very volatile so the total market cap of one hundred dollars one hundred million dollars it's not uh, correct anymore after one hour maybe it's two hundred million dollars so I so I said hey why not just make it a uh, interactive HTML page so if you go to this web page you have these you have this flyer, this graphic, but it contains up-to-date information. So that's how it started. If you go to the Llama Air Force website right now, you uh, immediately see the see this uh, convex flyer. Uh, that that that's this that's the design uh, he came up with, uh, and that's also the first page we had on the Llama Air Force. Um, and naturally, as bribes uh, came in, everybody was questioning uh, everybody else about. What should I vote for? Um, how much am I earning? What can we expect? How is the how is the round going? Um, and from there on, um, Benny Benny, uh, am I saying this correctly? Yeah, Benny. Uh, I was focusing on the uh, volume part, so I was gathering the statistics, gathering the statistics, and the data for the bribes round. And Benny was interested in showing graphs and data about the APR of various convex pools. So uh, there's also a convex page and a curve page, which shows that uh, among the various convex pools, there's this much TVL in it, and uh, this is the APR you're currently earning, and this is the historical graph of that APR. So you can see uh, how it has evolved over time for each pool on convex. So uh, as he as he decided to help in uh, to help me out, uh, we just started basically expanding this analytics website because that's how it started. Uh, it started as an analytics website and then Tommy from Vodium told me about this upcoming feature about uh, uh, bribe forwarding 
and I had the idea of um, maybe just pulling everything together because everybody was complaining about volume. There's like 10 different tokens. You gotta claim everything. Uh, and if you don't, uh, if you don't claim everything, or if you, if you don't let Vodium handle the vote, you gotta vote manually. People were screwing up uh, the pools, they were voting for the wrong pools, so they would not get any reward at all. So I had this idea that maybe uh, we could uh, let people just uh, let Vodium itself do the voting for them as a delegate, and we could process their rewards. And Benny was like, hey, yeah, sure, we can do that. If you make the front end, then I can do the smart contracts where we uh, we'll swap out these various tokens for convex uh, curve. We can make a, I can make an auto compounder vault, uh, and that's how it started rolling. And it's been, when I look at the first commit uh, of the Lama Air Force, it's somewhere in September. So we basically started from scratch about four, seven months ago, like a half a year ago, right now. So uh, when Lama token? Never. Mm -mm. Everybody's asking for a llama token. I think it's, I think it's Anthony Sassano who also, who also said that everybody, everything's gonna have a token somehow at some time. But what, um, what I have learned with Benny and what other teams like Vodium have learned as well is um, the kind of revenue that Benny and I make. It doesn't really make sense to tokenize. Uh, it's just enough for two people uh, to have a ha to live a happy life. But if you would spread it out over 10,000 token holders, everybody would be earning like $4 a month or something. It's not It's not a lot. And I think there's going to be a lot of uh, very niche, very specific DeFi protocols consisting of a team of about two to three people. And it doesn't really make sense uh, to create a token for it. Why? Why? It, it's like it's a little bit like a private company. Uh, there's no need for every private company to, to become public. Uh, usually it's used as an exit plan. If, uh, if the founders or if the developers want an exit plan, if they want to cash out, they turn the private company into a public company. And that's about it. That's the use case of a token in that case. So uh, no token for Lama Air Force anytime soon. No, yeah. No, yeah. I, re I remember back when you guys first launched, people would half teasing and half serious would be in the discord and be like yeah when llama token when when volume token and everyone thought for the longest time it was gonna happen until they eventually learned to give up for volume it might reality. make a little bit sense because their revenue is literally a hundred times bigger than ours but in our case uh no it's uh, if everybody wants to spend twenty dollars to get a token and then earn 10 cents per day not even 10 cents per day 10 cents per month no that's not gonna work that's not gonna be worth it and I think a lot of um, there's a lot of been there's a lot of been uh, there has been a low a lot of low hanging fruit. So there's been Ave lending protocols. There's been Curve. There's been Convex. And as time progresses, uh, these DeFi DApps, these protocols are getting more niche and more specific and more. The use cases are getting more narrow and narrow. And that also means that these revenues are getting smaller and smaller, which means that. Uh, the revenue is big enough for a team of like two to three people uh, to fully uh, dedicate, but it doesn't really make sense uh, as a revenue sharing mechanism. It's like your local flower shop around the corner. They're not going to tokenize either because the owner of the flower shop just makes barely enough for himself. Makes sense. I'm heartbroken. It, I'm in it for the meme. Not really the revenue on that one. No, I definitely agree. It would be kind of funny if you guys just launched a token out of memes, but then I'm scared it may become something like Shibu Shibu Inu or Doge or, or Doge or ApeCoin or something like that along those lines. We did have a we did have a couple of guys who've been wanting to make an NFT for us, but even with an NFT, I think um, everything is so hyper focused on money, it drains away the fun of an NFT. I think. Totally agree. And so many rug pulls right now, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the first ideas that I thought because um, how Keith first discovered me was uh, me being so active in the Discord and trying to find my place in the ecosystem I wanted to contribute because um, back, I got in kind of early and then at the time it was near all time high. I'm like, oh, I'm up like four or five acts from my initial amount. Um, 
and I really like the Discord and the community. Like, I like to contribute. Um, that's that was my first idea that I was gonna do an NFT pro, like an NFT style, just because all my friends got into crypto with the NFT wave that just happened. Um, obviously that didn't happen. We ended up doing launching the podcast, but glad to know that glad to know that would have been rejected anyways yeah <laughs> people have even been offering for free but even if it's a free fun nft you're still gonna have to spend time on it people are gonna have people are gonna asking questions they're implicitly gonna assume it has some kind of value or it has some kind of future potential for something even bigger that's not something uh, at least i don't want to uh, uh have on my shoulders Talking up, talking about the NFT and all, all this stuff, um, this is going to lead to my next question. So, a lot of people in, well, a lot of ecosystems here in DeFi, they, they're each community. They have like a mascot or like a role model or like a name that they call themselves, and um, I, I feel like everyone in DeFi is trying to look for their home, their their niche community that they feel like they contribute or they belong to um a lot of people here have have kind of made place they made their home here they they hang around curve the curves curve server or volume or or convex um but our community is not like the rest where we have a mascot or we we call ourselves something not like snx people with the spartans or or none of that so what I was. I wanted your opinion on the com- our community, our our little community that kind of rose around convex. What do you, th- what do you think of it? The um, what do you think best represents it, or. And yeah, generally that's. I yeah, I really like the it. community because it's not a uh, community that's built on hype. Uh, I don't want to discredit the Frog Nation community, but it's. It was built on a on a lot of hype, uh, and not on much substantial uh, uh, fundamentals. I mean, spell is a good token, of course, and then he had some good ideas, but it's not really comparable to convex uh, and curve in general, where pe- where people are really focused on numbers. Uh, if somebody's saying something, uh, you gotta you gotta. Uh, gotta bring arguments to the table not everybody everybody's not gonna take your shit if you're gonna spout out nonsense you're gonna get called out because you're being uh, you're just spreading false information or whatsoever everybody's on their edge everybody's trying to get the truth out so it's very level-headed if you ask me and I like it that way and of course during a bear uh, during uh, or I should say during uh, very big price spikes and dumps when the price is going up very fast very high uh, the other way around of course people are going to be hyped uh, people are going to be trolling uh, but usually it's only for a short amount of time and after that um, these people leave or they lose interest and the people that remain are the people that are that are still believing in the core uh, principles of the protocol uh, and everything that surrounds it so I think it's a very analytical uh, a very pragmatic community uh, compared to the rest of DeFi of course there are some other protocols as well uh, which I'm obviously missing, but um, it's different uh, compared to other hyped communities, and especially the NFT community, which is very energetic. So for those of us who are newer to the community, where in the world did the llama come from? Uh, I think it's pretty unsubstantial. It's pretty, there's not a lot of lore behind it, I think. I wasn't there, so I've heard it from Kendrick, uh, which is one of the Discord mods on the Convex server, which is, I think, that's where his name comes from, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I think it was, he, he told me, or I read about him, uh, that uh, when Curve first was being launched, it, it, had, it had a pretty pretty hectic launch. Uh, it didn't have an official launch. Somebody, it had kind of a rogue launch. So the code was put on GitHub, uh, the contracts were publicly available, but there was no official launch yet. And somebody just decided to, well, the contracts are live, I'm just going to deploy it. So uh, as somebody anonymous deployed it, uh, everybody was like, is this, is this, is this real? Is this, what I, is, this, is this what we should be using? Uh, so as everybody was scrambling in a little bit of panic, 
I think uh, Kendrick Lamar just posted some llama pictures for everybody to calm down, and I think that's literally it. It's that boring lore story that's uh, that brought the llama to life. Love it. I, there's no I was... there's no heroic tale. There's no poem. There's no epic poem. That, that's that's just it. I think that's awesome. I, I tried searching <laughs> the Discord. I, I was searching the server there. Like, where the heck did this llama come from? And you know, am I the only one who doesn't know this? So. Appreciate that uh, little bit of lore there. Um, l let's ask this. Let let's get some uh, idea on uh, get your crystal ball out. Let's look into the future. What's going to happen in the the convex ecosystem here? Let's let's say one month, six month, and twelve months out. Uh, what what do you think is going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen? Well, we know for sure what's going to happen is that. Uh... Convex is going to launch their frex pools. Uh, I think C2 said that these frex pools are currently under audit. Uh, so once they are launched, uh, you can probably stake your uh, LP, uh, frex LP tokens on Convex and earn uh, boosties that way. Um, I'm being a little bit vague because I don't know the specifics of how it's going to be working uh, exactly because frex is a little bit more generic than curve. There's, uh, I think the, the pools are very, yeah, how do you say that? These are very abstract pools, so I cannot give a concrete example of how they're going to be uh, looking. But there are certain positions uh, like a Uniswap, uh, Frex, uh, USDC, LP pool. So you're just being a liquidity provider for a Frex token. Uh, as long as it is able to uh, get Frex emissions, so if, if it has a Frex gauge, then you could basically stake it on Convex, uh, I think. Uh, so once that once that is out of the door, you will probably see the Vodium guys trying to see if there is a market for uh, Vodium bribes uh, for the Frax pools. So I think it's been highly, it, it's just been a theory, but uh, one of the possibilities is that there's going to be, uh, uh, for example, a, a certain kind of uh, Frax cauldron on Abracadabra and they could uh, ask for a gauge uh, for that Frex uh, cauldron so that if people open a lending position, if they open a borrowing position of a certain Frex token, they could possibly uh, uh, get gauge rewards from the Frex, uh, from the Frex, from the Frex system and potentially Abracadabra could bribe people, uh, could bribe people to vote for emissions for that uh, gauge so that people are incentivized to open a lending position for Frex on Abracadabra. Uh, this has just been theoretical. Uh, this is a made-up example because uh, I don't think Abracadabra is interested in some kind of system like this. But it's just there to show what's possibly what's possible in the system. So the first step is frax pools on convex. The step after that is possibly frax bribes, and I don't think there's any roadmap beyond that. So uh, wh where do you see the uh, the number going other than to zero? in the next year? Uh, I don't know. I think it's been pretty stable. Uh, when I look at the uh, one, tr one, the one true metric, which is um, uh, emissions in a dollar for every dollar spent on bribes, you can see that the bribes at the moment are very reasonably, reasonably priced uh, uh, as far as the eye can see. I think one dollar in bribes gives you about one dollar and 55 cents in uh, emissions. This is just for Curve. I don't know about Frax. It might be different. But I, my personal opinion is is that uh, it might go up a little bit. It might go down a little bit. But I think everybody everything is reasonably priced. So if there's going to be a huge uh, move up, it's probably because of the entire ecosystem, ecosystem uh, moving up. So DeFi in its entirety, uh, or just Curve, or uh, Ethereum. Uh, but I think that Convex has had most of its growth already. So if you're expecting a moonshot, I don't think that Convex is going to be one. But it's still a good it's still a good hold. You, you can uh, earn a lot of uh, good yield with it. It's not going anywhere. I don't think it's going down as well because there's a certain floor. Because if the price goes down, then uh, it becomes more attractive for protocols to buy it. Uh, because of the uh, endless, endless emissions. Because if you buy a CVX token... You basically have emissions until uh, well, I was I was about to say eternity, but it's about three hundred years because there's about three hundred years of curve emissions. Um, but there is a certain 
floor price. So I don't think it's going anywhere. W would you call it's... Convex a, a blue chip at this point then? Uh, yeah, I think you can con Yeah, I think you can consider it as a blue chip. Um, so the question is, how can Convex still grow? Uh, the most natural way is not to grow uh, vertically, as in uh, capture more TVL because they already capture a lot of TVL. I think they, uh, I think 99% of all curve TVL is already staked on convex, around 99%, maybe it's 95%, somewhere in that area. Uh, it's probably going to be the same for Frax. So the only way that they can grow is to uh, possibly uh, adapt more protocols like, for example, Ribbon or Angle or Dopex or Silo. Um, but it's up to these protocols if they want a partnership or not. Maybe they want to spin up their own convex uh, fork. That's uh, that's a big unknown. Because uh, one of the examples, for example, um, um, Dopex and Jones are also going to have VE tokenomics. There's V Jones and there's going to be V Dopex. Um, so everybody was been expecting. Oh. Uh, Convex could maybe adapt these uh, tokens and convexify them uh, into CVX Jones and CVX uh, DPX. But um, there's also a new project called Plutus, um, which is trying to front run Convex into implementing uh, the convexification of Jones and uh, Dopex. So uh, it's not that every VE token is going to be part of Convex. There could be multiple different kind of Convexes adapting different VE tokens. So it's not that it's not like convex is going to be winner takes all. There could be forks of different tokens. So it's interesting how that's going to play out. So when we were doing our live show, uh, it was actually yesterday. Uh, we're we're talking on Monday here. Um, somebody brought up the question about Stargate and is, is that a threat to convex and the convex ecosystem? Um, but do you have any perspective on that? Uh, I'm not. A, I didn't look into Stargate that much, but from what I've gathered is that uh, it's basically a bridge. If I'm correct, I'm uh, like I said, I'm not an expert, so I'm just still trying to understand it. But I think it's a bridge between multiple tokens, and the one thing that connects the uh, it's a bridge between multiple chains, and the one thing that's that's the glue that that glues the chains together is their STG token. Um, so, for example, if you want to bridge from Ethereum to uh, Arbitrum, uh, you're going to have to transfer a token from Ethereum to Arbitrum. And I think that's the STG token. Uh, but that means that uh, um, when you uh, have ETH on Ethereum, uh, you need to swap uh, Ethereum for STG somewhere. And that's probably going to be Curve. And on the receiving end, when you receive the STG, when you bridge it over, you're going to want to swap the STG back to ETH. And that's probably going to happen on Curve as well. So uh, what I'm expecting um, is that STG is going to have to be setting up a lot of Curve pools among different chains uh, as an order uh, to fully implement their bridging solution. So if you want to move from ETH to ETH on different chains, it, it has to pass through two different Curve pools with the STG token in between. And they're going to have to incentivize it probably for liquidity. Uh, it's going to generate fees, swapping fees for Curve. So I think it's an extension and an addition to the Curve ecosystem. And I don't think it's an, it's a competitor of some sort. I don't think it's a competition or a threat. I would like to go out on the point that he said towards the end about the making L um, L2 pools. And that's that's how they're probably going to, they're going to have to go through Curve and they're going to, have to do do that which is obviously can be good for us and i think one one thing that people are starting to realize now especially with this the one of the first l2 bribes this week is that we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more protocols bribe bribe on mainnet at least um to us for l2 for l2 pools for stg i know toka max they're gonna open up a dozen different pools or something crazy uh, they're going to do all their business through curve something along those lines and i have gone through different discords and asked and um some of the people there were saying that they plan as well to release um pools 
uh, pulls and implement Curve into their protocol and everything and use that as soon as V2 factory pulls um, come out uh, publicly, publicly without the guardrails in place. So I wanted to know a little bit of how do you how do you think Convex is going to play in the L2 uh, L2 ecosystem and cross chain, um, especially now that we're getting more and more involved and it seems like the time is getting closer as more things get released and uh, developed. Yeah, I think Convex is going to be a business to business protocol. Um, at the moment, well, maybe not even anymore, but at the start, uh, it had a lot of retail users because they, these retail users were the first to discover it, they bought the token, they farmed it, uh, etc. Uh, but now that bribes are um, kind of fairly priced, in my opinion, um, Convex is more of a token uh, that's interesting to protocols as a way to incentivize liquidity. Uh, because uh, these protocols, like for example Stargate and, and many other uh, protocols, uh, they're going to be starting up their own uh, curve pools. And in the old-fashioned way, these protocols had to mint tokens. Uh, a good, a good example would be, for example, Alchemix. That's the good old-fashioned way. They have the ALCX token, and they have the LUSD, uh, USDT, um, USDC, and DAI pool, so people could swap their LUSD for uh, USD tokens. But they have to incentivize it, and they, they used to incentivize that uh, by handing out uh, their own ALCX token. But you're basically uh, diluting your entire user base, your community, your own protocol, and it's not a sustainable way uh, to hand out incentives and to keep liquidity with you. Um, so, uh, what's interesting to protocols is that they have to they have the op they have the ability they have the option to uh, make a one time investment. So it's 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 a little bit like buying a house. Uh, they buy a house, and in this case, it's like buying CVX tokens. But in return, they get emissions until the end of time. So they, uh, if they have a pool, they can vote for their own pool to receive emissions and that pool can get uh, uh, liquidity which they need they need deep liquidity and in case that in the case of uh, if they even spin up a new pool or if they if they're migrating away or if they're uh, removing old pools they can easily um, uh, direct uh, the current emissions that they control with these cpx tokens to their new pools so basically they don't have to hand out direct incentives anymore they just bought a token that gives them endless, uh, I'm just going to say theoretically endless uh, emissions. Um, so they're buying essentially um, what they want is liquidity. And by buying CVX tokens, they buy liquidity for a very, very long time without having to dilute themselves and, and minting their own tokens. So... Uh, I don't think users and retail users will be interested in CVX tokens. I mean, of course, they can get bribe income, but I think protocols will be buying CVX for that liquidity that, liquidity that they need. So in that regard, you could yeah, in that regard, you can consider it as a blue chip and a business to business uh, protocol, um, since uh, everybody wants these emissions. I think one thing that people would like to hear, at least your take on when they listen to this recording after, would be all the new protocols that are, that are building on top of Convex and try to add different um, different utility and different products, and such as Landflare, Butterfly, uh, there's something called Conic Finex now, um, I don't even know if I pronounced that right, but you get the general idea. How do you... Like what are your what are your thoughts? What are your what are your thoughts on these new protocols coming up? Um, all the additional layers coming up because it was Curve now con uh, Convex. Then there was Volium and you, but now there's people building on top of you guys or implementing your you guys to your protocols. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you gotta be a little bit careful whenever a new protocol pops up that tries to uh, build on top of Curve and Convex. A lot of these uh, new protocols. Uh, they're not essential they're not they're not good ideas per se and i think the main goal of these new protocols is just to acquire a lot of cvx tokens because of course cvx is a valuable token uh, it's very sought after uh, by a lot of protocols 
So whenever a new protocol pops up, it has to have a use. It has to have a good use case. So I know Redacted, for example, is working on a liquid CVX, uh, liquid, a liquid locked CVX uh, solution. So the current problem with CVX is that it's, is that if you lock it, it's locked for 16 weeks. Um, that's problematic uh, because you cannot do anything else with that VL CVX, the lock CVX. So if you could liquefy it, li is there a is there a word for it? If you can make it liquid, then you could possibly use it uh, as collateral for a loan. Um, uh, for example, you could put it on Fuse. So if you have uh, CVX, you lock it for bribe money so it has yield. And you could put it on Fuse and you could use your CVX while it's earning yield. You could use it as collateral for a, a further loan. Uh, in the case of Alchemix, for example, they could introduce an ALCVX token, which uh, theoretically you could put your CVX on there and you could use it as collateral for your self-repaying loan and it pays it off using bribe income. That's one possibility. Um, there's um, uh, well, there's Curvins and there's Band and there's Conic indeed. But with a lot of these tokens, I mean, with a lot of these protocols, I don't necessarily see the added value of them. Um, and it's not entirely clear to me what their goal is. Um, and it's very difficult to distinguish between a legitimate use case and if a protocol merely exists to acquire CVX and get a good treasury token, get a good treasury. So as, yeah. It's going to be more and more difficult because as people are building on curve and convex, uh, there's going to be less uh, problems uh, that remain to be solved. And it's going to be a lot trickier for protocols to pop up because it's very difficult to come up with ideas that even improve, uh, that, that improve even further upon CVX. I think the way forward is to is to uh, look for protocols that find a way to uh, make the CVX the locked CVX token liquid, because once you have liquid CVX, you can start doing interesting things with it. You can start to use it as collateral. You could maybe make an abracadabra cauldron. Uh, like I said, you already have, like I already said, you could make an ALCVX. You could put it in a uh, fuse pool. You could possibly use it in a, uh, a set index while it's earning yield. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities opening up that way and I think that's the way forward if it's uh, achieved someday yeah I look forward to that day when uh, we, we have more options with the, the liquidity of the uh, locks, locked CVX token um, l last question I have for you is what would you say to somebody who says the most important part of Llama Air Force is ensuring that there is token logos. Uh, I think uh, this round we've got another few new tokens that I do not have a logo for yet. <laughs> and to everybody that complains about these logos, I think the logo, um, the logo itself, the missing token logo, is a perfect reflex reflection um, of their behavior. <laughs> Excellent. It's like looking into a mirror. <laughs> They're looking into themselves. I, I definitely appreciated when you, you answered my request and got got yeah. added as an email. The reason these icons are missing is because um, the convex website itself has. Uh, if you go to the pool section of the convex websites, you have these icons for a lot of pools. And it's uh, one single SVG file, and I reuse that because uh, there's a lot of overlap between our icons and uh, the convex icons. But whenever there's a new pool, excuse me, <clears throat> whenever there's a new pool, I have to re-download the SVG file from the convex website, and I have to make up a mapping that maps a certain kind of pool. Like in this case, it's a, uh, it's the grow token, um, FPW. FP FPWDR pool, so I have to map that pool uh, to the grow token, and that way only then you can see the grow uh, logo, and that's a lot of manual labor, and uh, a lot of times I don't have the motivation to update the icons. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> it's it's manual labor, so that's why it's uh, lagging behind all the time. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, really appreciate your time today. Um, love the conversation. Excited to get this out to everybody, and uh, want to wish you the best. Uh, all all the best with the union with Lama Air Force, and uh, all the best to us all. May we not go to zero. Probably not, and if we do, well, we had a good run. That's right. right. All right, it's fun while it lasted. <laughs> yeah. On to the next thing. Yep. At least yeah. we made friends. Keymaker Podcast.